good afternoon. Uh, I have a, a want to share with you a small testimony. This is the real life issue and how it is happening. And uh, it is a personal life experience. And uh, the testimony I'm about to tell you happened during ignorant, ignorance days. And so my testimony is not to blame anybody because the level of the information had not reached. But still it has an impact because I believe that uh, we still have religious leaders who are still very strong either in their doctrines or the foundation of their faith to the level that they can still do what happened to me. So I'm going to share with you very shortly in a few minutes. Uh, my name is Bishop James Okombo. I am with Free Christian Assemblies. It is an indigenous church. I'm a pastor in Nairobi. I actually want to declare that I am beyond HIV and AIDS stigma and discrimination. I learned about my HIV status in a very discriminating way. Uh, I worked as a prison warder in Kenya and uh, had not been converted to Christianity. But later, as I was working there, I married locally, just normal way people, people marry, not in the church. Of course, just with the family you agree and then you marry. And uh, that time, as I was working, my wife comes from an Anglican church. So through her, she began convincing me to go to church. And then I began going. So after some times, I felt there was a need really to be permanent in the church. And that's how I began going to a Bible school to learn more about the Word of God. And later on, I felt in my heart that I'm called to be a preacher. And uh, it happened. So I did all possible ways I can to resign from my work and become a clergy. Um, it was well with me. The family was very happy. Children, and we were doing so well. Uh, sometimes in 1998, my wife felt sick. She was crying of a few things here and there, like, you know, you know, women sometimes, I'm feeling here, I'm feeling there, I'm feeling here, I'm feeling here. And of course, you take lightly. We men, Sometimes you're not very serious. So, but one day she said, no, today I can't wake up. This is very serious. Then that day I said, surely you need a hospital. <laughs> so I managed to take a hospital that is in Kenyatta in Nairobi. And uh, that's the time I realized that this lady was so sick. Because within three days, she was losing her ears. She was very thin. She was coughing. She had all the diseases, name it. And already had been ordained a bishop, a very big man in the institution, well-respected person and overseeing a very big diocese, and mostly in the city called Nairobi. Uh, my wife was in the hospital for about uh, uh, two months. And always as a clergy, I could go there in a lot of, with a lot of love, with my caller, going to see her. And see, sometimes we clergy, we, there are so many things we don't know. I even didn't know the meaning of words. I just knew the labor word and the children word, but any other word I knew, it so everybody could go there and you can be sick and be put to any word. So I didn't know the meanings of words. But um, as I was going to visit my wife with my caller, people looking at me, church members were working with me, my fellow clergy were going together. And as I take them to the ward where my wife was lying, they were afraid, and I could see in their faces that they don't want to go there. I was asking myself, what is happening? Then for a, a long time, I even remained alone. I began going to that ward alone. So whenever I go there, I ask, did anybody come to see you? Today I didn't see anybody. And people decided to stay away from her as much as they could. Uh, the doctor never told me anything. They just said, your wife is suffering from typhoid from TB, from pneumonia, from malaria, so, so many things. Uh, but one day, I began seeing different people attending her. There's a body called Kemri in Kenya, and I began seeing them more regularly coming to attend my wife and other people in the world. And I was wondering, what are they doing? And uh, when my wife was about to be discharged, a doctor called me and told me, 
that uh, we have found your wife has a big disease, a very big one, the one which kills people. And I was, big disease? Where can big disease come from? I was really uh, terrified. Well, that was it enough. Uh, I accepted a half reality that it could be true. But eventually she was discharged and we went home, but was given some drugs which I was not told what were they, but they were the, the ARVs by then. Um, the Dr. Bell had come up with some drugs and uh, they, used, they were giving my wife. Um, I went back home, but uh, already somebody had took the word to my archbishop. And my archbishop had that, uh, uh, I have AIDS, my wife has AIDS. And then immediately he summoned us, he called for a big uh, church council meeting. So when I reached the church council meeting, it was in a place called Kisumu. Uh, this wonderful man of God put us down and as his workmate. And he said that I've called you urgently for this meeting. I have three things I want us to discuss. And you know you are very senior in this ministry. So he said one thing, I am not going to tolerate those who do not develop their churches or the diocese, wherever they are. Secondly, I'm not going to tolerate those people who don't attend the meetings whenever I call, because this is where we agree on how to develop church and what to do for the ministry. And thirdly, I'm not going to tolerate those who commit adultery in the church or in the diocese where they work. So I looked at the three, three and I said, I'm very clean. Because already that my diocese was high even in terms of finance. Uh, I was, I've never missed any meeting. And of course, I was very faithful to my wife for 13 years. That time had been a Christian. So I didn't see any question mark in my life. But I was surprised. Because after talking like that, he called me and said, uh, Kombo, can you come in front? Then he asked me, what is happening with your wife? I said, well, my wife has been sick, now she's at home. She had um, uh, typhoid, she had malaria, she had TB and other diseases. But now, other diseases are gone, she's recovering from TB. Then I saw the old man, like, the tears want to come out. And I said, what happened? What's happening? But he said, you are a liar. You, we sent you to Nairobi to oversee the church. We depend on you. When we know very well that you are the one among the people who are going to stand for this organization here in Kenya, and you have messed up, you have spoiled our name. Then after we have confronted you, you still don't want to tell us the truth. You have AIDS, you have infected your with AIDS, and here you are denying us the truth. Then he said, I cannot work with you. He said, we would then you give you our collar, and he called a few fellow. They came together, they stripped off the collar. He said, can you give up back our shirt? I gave back the shirt. Then he said, go to the office, pick your transport, go back to Nairobi, move from the church house. We are bringing somebody new there. Find somewhere to go and die. Uh, we have nothing to do with you. That was long, 1998.